Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new I do work here lady stories, shall we? But first, thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. And if you haven't already, why don't you make this the video that you subscribe to the channel. And please don't forget to hit the like button for the algorithm. It really helps out the channel and would mean a lot to me. And now let's begin with the first story, shall we? It's called Good Managers Back Up Their Staff. I used to work in a grocery retailer. At this place I worked in the coffee kiosk, which was another large retailer. I was there every single day, basically from opening until closing. We were extremely short staffed, three baristas including me, and the other two were so unreliable they may as well have not shown up at all, sometimes they didn't. And if you are wondering why I was the one to cover all of the screw ups, it was because I was the supervisor slash manager. It was my responsibility to cover any call outs and no shows. Needless to say, I knew my stuff and was basically a one person show. Well, one day I was working a 13 hour shift and the day had already started off really rough. I had been called an idiot for trying to ring up someone's personal cup because it looked unused and had the barcode still on it. Then I had another woman try to accuse me of poisoning her coffee. She was not in her right mind, but I've dealt with her before. So I was already done with the day and my shift was only halfway over. Well, I'm standing at the counter with my ordering guide. Ironically enough, as you'll see in a minute, sitting in front of me while I pace back and forth to see what supplies we have and which are needed. I haven't even made it to the floor merchandise when I hear the very common and very frustrating call. Excuse me? I look up and see this Karen standing at one of the displays out on the floor. This one held all of our coffee beans and instant coffee packers as well as a couple of french presses. Now it's probably safe to note that I'm a very positive person outwardly. I have my struggles but I never make those outwardly known. This means I will always pitch positivity to people because I'm a firm believer in the saying, if you go into something with a negative perspective all you're going to find is more negativity. Anyway, I respond. Hi, what can I have you with today? Are you looking for something in part? Karen cut me off. Where the heck are your instant cold brews? I was taken aback by the force and anger in her words. Oh, well, we actually don't carry those at our location. Well, that's a lie, because I bought them here last week. Uh, well, did you possibly buy them somewhere else? Be she still wouldn't let me end my thoughts. No, I bought them here. At this point, she seemed to, very quickly, begin acting unhinged. I was kind of scared, not going to lie. Ma'am, I promise you, we don't. I bought them here last week. Where the heck is your manager? I swallowed back the lump in my throat as I tried to hold back tears in my eyes. I cry at confrontation very easily and I'm quite sensitive. Looking back, I definitely was not the type of person who should take on a managerial role, but I was desperate for the money and experience. I am the manager ma'am. I'm the supervisor of the bar. She swears some more and then demands the store director. Luckily enough, he was actually in the bakery nearby, so he heard the commotion and was already on his way over. As I was walking towards the phone to page him over the intercom, he rounded the corner and stood at the end of the bar next to the lady. I'd like to note that my store director was a very large, kind and soft-hearted man. He was the father figure every kid dreamed of, basically a 6 foot 6 teddy bear. Everything alright over here? His supervisor over here apparently doesn't know how to place orders. I'm looking for cold brew instant packets and she claims you don't sell them. I bought them here last week. My store director looks to me, confused, because this is all foreign to him. Unlike the other departments, he has no clue about how the coffee bar works as it is a different company and therefore we run on a different ordering system. Ma'am, I apologize, but I promise you she knows the ordering system much better than I do. There are far too many special tasks in each department in our store for me to know. I trust that my managers and supervisors are the best at what they do. Karen scoffs and rolls her eyes, throwing her hands up in exasperation. Before she gets another word out, I direct my attention to the store director. I promise you, we have never carried this product. Corporate stores do, but not at kiosks. It's not even an available option in my ordering guide. Here, I can show you. He looks down at the woman with that look of, we are about to end this once and for all, before he comes and looks at my ordering guide. Now, admittedly, he had no idea what he was looking for and he told me so later when we were talking about the incident. He scans the page as I show him exactly where the item would be if it were in our ordering guide. Ma'am, she's right. There's no spot in her guide that allows for ordering that product. There must be a misunderstanding. 
Before I can even apologize to the woman, she screeched and stormed off, not saying another word. I heard later that she pulled something similar over in the produce section and it escalated to the point where she was trespassed off the property. I unfortunately didn't get to witness it, because produce was on the exact opposite side of the store. Either way, my store director actually let me close the bar down for the rest of the day that day, as he saw just how shaken up I was about the situation. The next story is called crazy guy wants to speak to the real manager. This was a long time ago. I was around 21, petite and pretty. This is the only excuse I have for his reaction. I was leaving the company to help my grandmother take care of my grandfather the next day and was in a mood where I cared about nothing. I was also the assistant grocery director and one of 4 to 5 people that had the ability to open and close the store. I get a call over the grocery sound system calling me to one of the registers. I had just finished unloading a truck. It was around 9 pm. It took me a minute to get to the front, but it couldn't have been much more than 5 minutes. When I get to the register, I had a cashier that was nearly in tears and a man that had lost his mind screaming at her to get the manager, now. I asked the employee, how can I help? She started to say, this, but was cut off by this crazy man. I want to talk to the manager. I was starting to wonder how I didn't hear screeching from the back. I summoned all the calm and patience within me. Ok sir, I'm the manager, how can I help you? He looks me up and down. No, I want to talk to the real manager. If you read my badge, you will see that I am the assistant grocery director. I'm the manager on duty, how can I help you? Fine, if you won't let me talk to the real manager, I don't want anything. And with that, he walks out. I start to void the groceries that have already been rung up and signal one of the beggars to collect them to be put back. And I ask the employee, so what was that about? For those where a bluebell ice cream is not available, they have three different levels at three different prices. The ones with a gold rim are the most expensive. Silver is mid-priced and brown are the cheapest. You know how we have bluebell on sale, buy one, get one for free? Yeah, he got one of the gold and one of the brown, but the register only gives the discount if you buy two of the same color. He just wanted an override so that he could get the brown one free? Yep. Everyone stuck working until 11 pm got a good chuckle out of this idiot's behavior. It was my last day. If he had been a nice guy, I might have even given him the gold one free. Two decades later, it is still something that makes me shake my head when it comes to my mind. On the plus side, we all got to have a moment of total understanding that this guy was a monumental jerk. The third story is called, I talked to the director about it. I run an events and operations office for a large organization that has venues we rent out, both to external clients and to other departments within the organization. We have a general policy where we require at least 10 business days notice in order to book space. Occasionally we'll suspend that if we are not super busy and or the client is really nice. Some departments within the organization are notorious for ignoring this and will try and bully their way around these rules. We also employ a lot of college students and oftentimes this is their first job. Other departments know this and try to take advantage. Typically our front office staff will answer the phones and take client information and process initial requests. But on this particular day we were shorthanded, so I was helping out in answering the front office line. Events office, how can I help you? Yes, I need to confirm my reservation for tomorrow, she said. Not a great sign. We always confirm our events at least a week before the day off sooner if possible. But not unheard of that clients sometimes want to double check and this woman sounded nice enough so I'll help her out. Certainly, do you have your reservation number? Oh no, I'm not sure where I put that, she replied sounding sweet as a pie. Ok, not the end of the world, we have other ways of finding the request. Alright, can I have your name or the name of your event? My name is Angry Lady and I'm in other department, she said, her voice losing a little bit of that sweetness. I looked up her department and her name, but didn't get any returns for upcoming events. I'm sorry, I'm unable to find any reservations under your name or department. Is it possible someone else made the reservation? Look, I called yesterday and booked a big conference room. Why is this so difficult? She was getting annoyed now. I steered myself for my reply. Well ma'am, we have an issue here. We do not have your event in our system. We require at least 10 business days notice for new requests. If your request came in yesterday, I'm sure my staff told you that you will need to get an exception. She cut me off. Her voice had regained its sweet overtones again. Oh, well, I spoke with the director and he told me that there wouldn't be any problem with this request. He said he'd have his staff handle this. Odd, I certainly don't remember speaking with this lady, yesterday or otherwise. Ma'am, 
I began. I don't think that's possible. I, young man, she said, our pretense of politeness completely gone now. This really threw me off too. While I'm certainly not advanced in age, it has been quite a few years since anyone under 80 called me young man. But she must have assumed I was one of the college students we usually have at the front desk. I already told you I spoke with the director, and he approved this. I don't understand why you are being so difficult. If she had been nice about this, this would have been fine. I probably would have even tried to figure out a way to accommodate her. Especially since it sounded like she just needed one of our fixed conference rooms. So it would have been easy enough to fit in. But she decided to be rude about it and lie. Time to put the hammer down. Ma'am, I am the director. I am the only one who can provide exceptions and I definitely did not speak with you yesterday. Now, I am happy to help you find another date if you'd like, but we are not able to accommodate you for tomorrow. Silence, then sputtering. Then she demanded to speak to my boss. I reminded her that as the director I was the highest authority in the department. And while she was welcome to speak to my boss, the company CFO, she would just kick any event related issues back down to me. So the angry lady hung up. But the story doesn't end here, because this lady obviously did not believe me and didn't have the sense to make a nickel. Right after she hung up on me on the front office line, my direct line rang. And wouldn't you know it, it was angry lady herself on the caller ID. Now usually I just answer with, hello this is my first name, as answering the phone and using my title feels pretentious, but I really wanted to drive the point home. Hello, this is director, my last name. I guess she recognized my voice, because she didn't even bother saying anything. She just hung up. The last story is called, fire you or give you a bonus. So in college I worked basic security. One place I worked weekends was a dance club. I have very few tasks. Check identification, confirm it's real, spot trouble, maintain order. And I did just that. A person would come up, I'd ask for their identification and would put it through our machine. If it passed, they would move past me to the counter to pay their cover and if they wanted bottle service or other things that people that want to feel special waste money on. If it failed, I'd hand the identification off to our runner and he'd run it down the block roughly 30 feet to where local law enforcement was. I would then wait a little and then inform the person that an officer will be here to talk to them about their identification. Then I'd move on to the next in line. One Friday night we are slammed. I see a man at the back of the line step out and skip. Usually it's women that do this and it gives the line a brief laugh as they end up starting over. The man says, sup bro, and starts going to move past me. I stop him and inform him of the line and rules. He replies back that he's the owner of the club and he needs to get into his office. I reply, awesome, I've never met the owner, but he had my boss hire me to check identification and would be happy if I let you just in. He barks and says if I don't let him by, he will fire me. I reply, Sir, if you truly are my boss, then you know you hired me for a specific job. If I were to let anyone pass me, if they claim to work here, I wouldn't be very good at my job and you'd have to fire me anyway. He laughs and walks away. A few minutes later, he returns, shows me his identification and I let him in. About 5 minutes later, my ear radio goes off and I'm told to head to the office. I wait for another guard to come to my post and head to the office. When I get to the office, I see the guy, my direct boss and a few other people lounging and laughing. I ask what's up. The owner replies, you really set me off when you weren't letting me in my own club and I really did want to fire you at first. I think to myself, oh great, here we go. He continues, however, you were professional, respectful and stuck to your guns and your role here to keep us free of liability. I really did hire you for that and to fire you for that would not be cool. Here's your bonus tonight. He gives me $500 and tells me I can go home. I take the $500 and reply, Sir, I have nothing to do at home, as my sleep schedule is set up for this job, and I get my entertainment from watching drunk people be dumb. If it's okay, I'd like to finish my shift. He replies, Well, you're a weird one, but sure. So back to work. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.